And welcome to another 30 minutes of Point of View. This is Josh Barnes, and this is the show where we are unashamed to look at political issues from a biblical point of view, and not just political issues, just whatever's in the news. And uh, we do that because Jesus rose from the dead and uh, said that the Bible was true, and he's obviously God. People don't just rise themselves from the dead. Uh, he's obviously God, so he must be right. Bible. He said the Bible's true. Lots of other reasons we believe the Bible, but the chief one is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's provable because over 500 people saw him alive after he died. Over 500 people at one time saw him in one group setting. It's not a group hallucination. They all, m most of them uh, died uh, for that claim and refused to recant. And none of them ever recanted. Uh, they genuinely believe that they saw Jesus. And this is historical documented evidence that Jesus did rise from the dead. Anyway, we've been going through our list of interviews that we did at NRB, the NRB Christian Media Convention last uh, week. Well, actually, it was uh, now it's been about two weeks since we were at the convention in Dallas, Texas, and had a great time, met some really great people. Coming up next week is going to be our interview with Daryl Eves, the producer who is the along with Dallas Jenkins, is the producer of the Chosen TV series, and uh, you guys are not going to want to miss that. That'll be uh, airing next week. Our interview with him, but today we've got one more interview before we get to Dallas uh, to Daryl Eve, excuse me, and that is J uh, Jay Payleitner. Jay Payleitner. He's an author. He wrote the Jesus Dare. He's a friend of Josh McDowell's, who wrote the foreword for the book. And also in the book, we have this um, this uh, recommendation from Jerry Jenkins from the Left Behind series. He says, Leave is one of my favorite thinkers to issue the ultimate challenge for our day. Jay's dare is no trivial diversion. Enter into this only if you mean business. You might never be the same. And uh, it seems like a great book. I have not read this book. So any book that deals with salvation, I'm careful to recommend. So I want you guys to go check it out, buy it, and read it for yourselves, and let me know what you think. I have gotten so many books handed to me at NRB, I haven't been able to read this one yet. But from everything he says, it sounds like a good book. It sounds like basically a gospel track on uh, on only a large, large form. And he wrote it for his brother because he really wanted a way to sort of uh, take the religion out of things, the, the concern, the worry, and just think through this idea of who Jesus is and, and the gospel just logically with me for a second. And that's really how, it, how he approaches it. Sort of like, it, isn't it, doesn't it make sense to believe in Jesus? Does, isn't that logical? So I don't know what all of his reasoning is here, but I, it sounds really good to me. Here's uh, the uh, uh, page from the last chapter. He says this, um, he gives an example prayer. Um, and he says, dear God, it's pretty clear that nobody is perfect. We're all sinners. Because of that, no mere human is worthy of hanging out with you. Death is in inevitable when I die. Somebody has to pay for my sin. If that's on me, I don't want to imagine how I would be spending eternity. Thankfully, you love me enough to provide a way out. You sent your only son to live perfectly on earth and pay the penalty for my sin on the cross. It cost him everything. But amazingly, that ticket to heaven costs me nothing. I, have, I just have to accept that gift with that understanding, I trust you as Lord and Savior. Come into my life and guide me so that my life can give you give you glory. Amen. And this is this is essentially what needs that what needs to take place in someone's heart uh, in order for salvation. They must acknowledge that they're sinners, that they're worthy of, of damnation and eternity in hell, and that Jesus died to pay that penalty for them, and that they can have eternity in heaven with God because of the penalty uh, because the penalty has been paid by Jesus. So. This is this is good. This is right on. This is exactly what we need. So um, it sounds good to me. Check the book out. Let me know if there's something in there you disagree with. I, it sounds good to me. Um, and also, he's we're going to talk about with him The Prayer of Agar, which is another book that I'm looking forward to reading because The Prayer of Agar is one of my favorite uh, parts of the, of the Proverbs. And this is uh, another book from Jay. We'll, uh, I'll actually, after the interview, I'm going to come back on and I'll read the prayer of Agar to you and show you some of my favorite parts of it. But uh, before we do that, let's go to the interview that I did with Jay Payleitner in, at the NRB conference. 
And I'm here with author Jay Payleitner. He is the author of a brand new book, The Jesus Dare, The Adventure You've Been Waiting For. And Jay, thank you so much for joining us on Point of View today. Uh, Josh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this book, The Jesus Dare. Well, um, I've written 25 books and uh, a lot of them for families and marriage and, and such. And I realized as people come, uh, men would come up to me after I'm talking to dads and they'd say, Jay, it's just not, it's just not clicking with my kids. And I'd say, well, well how's, your, how's your faith life? And they'd go, well, uh, and I realized that to be the best dad or the best husband or the best carpenter you can be or the best whatever you're doing, you need to know who Jesus is. Um, and so that was kind of the, the, the core uh, idea behind the book is that everybody needs this, of course. Um, and then uh, I flash back. I, I produced, you know, you know, Josh McDowell, uh, More Than a Carpenter, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. I, um, I produced his radio program for 14 wow. years and uh, went, with, went to Moscow with him and handed out copies of More Than a Carpenter in Russian on the streets, on the gray streets of Moscow. And people were so eager for that. It was, it was you know, it was, uh, Josh used to describe it as um, if I had a, you know, had a cup of coffee with somebody who would tell him why Jesus is who he says he is. <laughs> and that's kind of that's kind of what this is, but it's the, the to, it's to a generation later, it's a book that you can hand to somebody without being in their face. Say, hey, I, I saw this book and I thought of you. You could give them the Jesus dare, and it's all right here. It walks them right through it very, uh, it, like, Jesus makes sense. People go, oh, Jesus, uh, that, I don't need that kind of stuff, but oh. No, Jesus makes sense. And really, um, Josh, I have to confess, the reason I, I, I wrote the book uh, is for my brother. Uh, he's a year older than me. We grew up together, and, uh, and he doesn't know Jesus. And I, I needed him to know. And, you know, as, as we, we, uh, we do family gatherings together. I love him dearly. We hang out. We laugh together. But I want him in heaven with me. And I want him to know why I believe what I believe. And, but, the, but with people you love and care about and see every day, it's kind of hard to, to, do the, to do the preaching that you need to do, to do the truth telling. And so I wrote this book uh, for Mark. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now some people might get the idea that this is daring people to try Jesus. Well, is that kind of the sense or is well, that something different? I, I just love the title. Um, but it... it, it it, it, it's, it sort of is. You know what? The, the very first chapter, I had some fun, having some fun with it. Um, it's like, okay, I'm, the first chapter kind of says, you know what, friends? Um, in this book you can read pretty quickly. It's pretty short. Uh, but I'm warning you, at the, la the last chapter, we're going to ask you to make a decision. So it's kind of like we're going to dare you. Um, it's not, and it is daring. It is, it's, it is a, a step of faith. You have, to, you have to go, oh, okay. This person that, I believe lived 2,000 years ago. I believe he's alive today. I believe he's the son of God. That's pretty daring to, to, to say, I'm going to trust him with my life. And uh, the point is that, but it does make sense. And that's why I want yeah. to say, it's a big dare, but it just makes sense. It makes right. sense. Yeah, it does <laughs> make sense. Why do you think, do you think that something, why do you think that so many Christians don't share their faith and, and sort of keep oh. it to themselves. Well, yeah, that's, that's, that might be even a better reason I wrote the book is because um, they, they understand the value of it. I, 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 down to my toes, I believe a, a true Christian, an authentic Christian knows that knowing Jesus makes your life better. But frankly, the culture, the culture kind of starts mocking Christians left and right. If you, if you start, you can believe in God. Oh, yeah, okay, God's important. Uh, you know, God... Is, uh, in God we trust, you know, it's on our money. But if you start talking about Jesus, um, you get people going, ah, I don't need that religion stuff, or, or, uh, or, or you get some pushback. So um, there's some fear there. There's some fact that we're not equipped for it. Even though we've heard the gospel, we've heard, you know, if you go to a good church, they're preaching the gospel on a regular basis. Um, and, and sometimes you want to invite someone to church. Oh, I wish that my friend Tom was, was with me today because that's, that's, the, that's the, the message today that would have touched his heart. Um, and again, if you have a Tom in your life, you can get a, a book like this or any. There are other books out there, The Case for Christ, Lee Strobel, there are other books like that. I, I know Lee. Um, uh, that you go, you know what, Tom? 
I, I saw this book. I thought of you. Uh, give it a read, would you? And, uh, and it's designed for Tom to go, oh, and read the first chapter. It's like, oh, I can read the second chapter. Oh, yeah. Well, that kind of makes sense. Well, that makes sense. I guess maybe religion is not so bad after all. Maybe, uh, maybe come as you are, I can do that. Yeah, you know what? While we're still sinners, you know, Christ wants us to come to him. So there are these little steps of faith that's like, oh, don't give me any big words. Don't preach at me, but just, just come alongside me and talk with me. And that's, so is that, is that, did I answer so, your question? No, no, that's great. <laughs> Walk us through some of the steps of the book and how the book brings you from sure. that place of unbelief because you can give away the book because people need to get it to give it away to their friends, right? It's, uh, you yes. Can, you, it's all right to, to, to tease it a little bit on the, on, oh, with that oh, and give oh, right. away what the oh, content is, Oh, for sure, is, right? absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, there are churches that are putting this in their welcome kit. Yeah, that's uh, great. That's just, it's like awesome. Yeah. Um, and it's cheap. You know, it's, a, it's a giveaway book. If um, So, uh, well, the point is that all of the arguments against knowing Christ and, and that people throw up there is uh, I don't need that or big long words I don't need to deal with justification and sanctification and what is that I don't need th-. I kind of explain that in a humorous way uh, that come as you are or or the idea that um, the, the a little chapter here all the late night talk show hosts you know they could be nice guys and I'm not gonna you know Jimmy Kimmel and Jimmy Fallon and all those mm-hmm. guys they're nice guys I'm sure I, I'm not I don't, I'm not judging their faith but it's really easy to mock conservatives, mock Christians, and uh, I would like to, I, I, and all the intellectuals these days, all the intellectuals mock Christianity. But all the intellectuals a, a century ago, Josh, all the intellectuals a century ago, they were Christians. And, and I quote uh, several of them. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the deep thinkers of our, uh, and all the, the great artwork of our time is, 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 is to glorify God. Um, I, I dare, dare I say that the artwork that's being honored these days is not, <laughs> is, not, is not being created to glorify God. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's, that's a really good point because a lot of people will avoid Christianity and will just think of it as silly because, well, the science community disagrees or, yeah, right. or the archaeology community. But is it really the community or is it just, you know, the heads of these communities today well, right? uh, people, modern day uh, people uh, uh, hide their faith mm-hmm. I mean you could you could work I mean you've heard stories of someone working side by side with somebody at a, at a, at a business or a manufacturer you work side by side for years and you don't know that guy next to you is an authentic Christian because he kind of keeps it to himself and that's not our job our job is to our job is to get to heaven take as many people with us as possible and I think, you know, have some fun along the way. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're having a lot of fun. I am. Where can people find this book? If, if a pastor's watching, would like to check it out to see if it would go good in the church. Oh, um, uh, you know, perfect. Um, uh, we, put up, we put a website together with, um, with videos on it and, and a seven-episode podcast and small group curriculum. And uh, it is even a, 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 a Jesus Dare song and Jesus Dare music video uh, at thejesusdare.com. Yeah. Thejesusdare.com. And you can also link to my website from there if you go there first. Absolutely. So, so we'll, we'll put that on, on the bottom of the screen. Fantastic. The Jesus Dare. And, uh, and can, may I keep this? Please do. I have not read the book yet, oh. but I love the concept. I love the idea of being able to hand, hand somebody something like that. Yeah. Do you have an audio version or any sort of video version that Pete, you can share something uh, online? Yeah, uh, the, a podcast. It's a full podcast that, that's, fr- that's free on, the, uh, on really? that website. On that website. That's great. That sounds really helpful because a lot of people want to share this on Facebook yeah. or, or something like that and be able to share your your uh, your website, I think, would be great. All right. Very good. Yeah. Any way we can get the gospel out, right? Um, uh, uh, be ready always. First Peter 3.15. Exactly. Be ready always to give an answer for the hope that's in you. But do it with gentleness and respect. Yeah. That's kind of my, that's gentleness and respect. And a little bit of humor, a little bit of come alongside kind of thing. So, yeah. So, how, how would you approach somebody who's, who's, you know, says they're a Christian, but they're just really not, they say, no, I don't want to share. Would you think, well, maybe, maybe I should share with them. Maybe they or, or is there, well, uh, how, how do you approach that? Uh, really good point. Um, Christians can read this book also and go, oh, I could share that. I could share, I can't preach at somebody. But I could share that, that, oh, that um, 
that we can come as we are. That, that uh, we're, you know, we're not supposed to have all the answers. We're not home yet. Right now, we're looking through this this dim dim mirror, and we don't exactly see what God has in store yeah. for us. And that's okay. So I could share. If somebody says, "Oh, I don't," you know, somebody, somebody has an argument. Most arguments that someone would, would come up to you and say, "I don't need this," uh, are answered right here. So this actually equips the. The believers as well. So this isn't just for lost people. That well, anyone can benefit from uh, from the information. Uh, you're uh, I, I'm I'm sure of that I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. And here's another book by Jay. It's the Prayer of Agar, which he didn't write the prayer. He wrote the book on the prayer. <laughs> Tell us about this book. This looks pretty incredible. Well, please don't get it confused with the Prayer of Jabez, which is expand my territory. <laughs> no, I get that. It's not the book is fine. Per, per Jabez is fine. And same same publisher, Multnomah. Mm. Same publisher. Okay, um, Josh, you know this, but very few people know this. Have ever even heard of Agar, or they go Agar? I think I think I know who that is. I heard about him, but okay. As I move my sorry sorry guys, I'm moving my <laughs> my microphone all over the place. It's getting exciting. Um, Proverbs has 31 chapters. We all know that. That King Solomon wrote the first 29 chapters, or his, maybe his minions might have, have written some of that. Proverbs 31, we know, is written by King Lemuel, and is, uh, includes that great passage that all the, the women's groups like, uh, the, uh, uh, yeah. the Proverbs 31, 31. gal who buys, who buys property and the works The virtuous woman. Yeah, yeah the, per- the, per- the perfect virtuous woman. Uh-huh. By the way, uh, ladies, it's impossible don't don't even try <laughs> to do everything that that the Proverbs 31 woman does. It's impossible. But Proverbs 30 is written by Agur, A G U R, and nobody knows that. Well, you know that, and some scholars know that. But he gets lost in the in sure. the shuffle. Yeah. Uh, but the only prayer in all of Proverbs is written by Agur in Proverbs 30, uh, 30 uh, verse eight. Uh, give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Think about that. D- give me, I don't want poverty, which that's fine, but don't give me riches either. And then the next verse goes on to explain, because if, if I have too much, if I have more than I need, I'll think it's all about me. That's my paraphrase. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, afterwards he says, and if I have too little, I, it's a, I might steal and dishonor you, God. I mean, what a great insight that, that Agur has himself. He knows that if he doesn't have enough, he might steal. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so does this book deal with the health and wealth, prosperity gospel, uh, promises, yeah. those no, types it, of No, it's just the or? opposite. We, it, this gets to, gets to where we need to be in this world today, finding our sweet spot mm-hmm. between too much and too little. I mean, you know, a, a little ambition, not greed, but a little ambition and wanting to provide for your family is a good thing. Yeah. But too much is enough. A little... I mean, if you're married, a little, i got to be careful here, but a little lust for your wife is a good thing. But that can go beyond, too. Sure. Uh, and the same thing with every other, uh, uh, every other uh, uh, character of humans have. Mm-hmm. A little, uh, uh, this, uh, got to find that sweet spot. So I explore that idea a few times. And, and uh, the whole uh, ch- chapter of Proverbs 30 is just very funny. It's very funny stuff. There's all kinds of crazy lists and there's lizards running through castles, and there's there's uh, eagles flying, and, and snakes doing stuff. But um, uh, so I had a great great fun with that. And at the end, I I I, I cover um, I, I take it from the sweet spot to the idea that God has something for you that is in your sweet spot, and it kind of helps people find that moment of oh God God has something for me, and uh, you know what if I. If I can tell jokes, I should need to be a, a joke teller for Jesus. Mm-hmm. If I can, uh, if I can build things, I need to build for Jesus. If I can, if I, uh, if I'm gonna just raise my kids to the best of my ability, that's that's what God wants to be. That's your sweet spot that God has given to you. And uh, uh, are you familiar with Ray Comfort and his ministry? Oh uh, well, sure. Yeah. One of the things that he says a lot is he talks about how people sometimes come to Christ for the wrong reason. They think it's going to make their life <laughs> wonderful and all this stuff. And that seems to be kind of the issue you're dealing with here. It's not about well, coming to Christ to have riches yeah. and fame. Oh, no, no. But it gives you purpose. Mm-hmm. You get up every morning, uh, and, and instead of saying, good Lord, it's morning, you say, good morning, Lord. What do you have in store for me today? I trust you that it's not going to be more than I need or less than I need. Uh, yeah. Well, daily bread is right there in, the, in you know in the in the Lord's prayer. Yeah. My my goodness, but um, 
and and there are uh, there are um, certainly other verses about uh, contentment, certainly, but um, but prayer of anger, um, because it's people don't know about it. It's just kind of a fun thing to explore mm -hmm. and remind people about, and suggest, hey guys, find that sweet spot. And you'll be living in a sweet spot. It's like yeah. hitting that tennis racket. Boom! You know, sometimes boring, the ball goes all over the place. Or, or uh, at, at Sunday service, uh, you've had a, 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 a singer on the on, uh, at the pulpit. He said, "Man, that song was great. It was right in my sweet spot." And that's where we want to live. Yeah, Josh, do you want to live in your sweet spot? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a big fan of uh, Agur and the words that he wrote in the pro Proverbs. I, yeah. I really have studied oh, some good. quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to reading the book. Interested to see what, what you have to say about it. And this can be found where? Well, uh, oh, any place you can buy books. Um, uh, my, my website is my, my name.com, jpayleitner.com. Impossible to spell, impossible to pronounce. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, and I've written 25 other books. Um, uh, one of my other favorites is What If God Wrote Your Bucket List. We'll talk about that some other time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some other time. Jay Payleitner, thank you for joining us on Point of View today. Thank you, Josh. Go check out his book, The Prayer of Agur and The Jesus Dare. Let me know what you guys think about it. Uh, if you like them, let me know. If you disagree, let me know. I, I haven't read them yet, so could be something I disagree with in there. I don't know. Um, I, I will say one uh, about the Proverbs that I, I do tend to disagree. I'm not sure what uh, what Mr. Payleitner was getting at about the uh, Proverbs 31. I think maybe he was saying that it's it's a very high standard, but yet... This is the standard, I think, you know, I, I, maybe there's a misunderstanding. I do think that this is a, a good thing for women to strive for, to be like the Proverbs 31 woman. I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, so I, I may have misunderstood him, but I, I might also disagree with him there. I'm not sure. So um, let uh, I will let you be the judge. Let me know if you feel like you disagreed with him or if you disagree with me or if you think that we both agree and there's nothing to disagree about. Proverbs 30 is the prayer of Agur. Here's the prayer that he was talking about. The words of Agur, the son of Jacob, even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel and Ukal. Surely I am a more brutish, more brutish than any man and have not the understanding of a man. I neither learned wisdom nor the knowledge of the holy. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who, have, who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Now, this is how he starts his prayer. I won't be able to, I won't have time uh, in the show today to read the entire prayer. But what's uh, amazing to me about the prayer of Agur is that he starts his prayer off saying, I must be an absolute idiot. <laughs> he says, I really don't know anything. I try and I study and all this, but surely I'm more brutish than any man. And I don't have under the understanding of a man because... Apparently, I haven't learned wisdom or even have the knowledge of the holy. He's talking about God. I don't even have the knowledge of God. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Well, who's ascended up into heaven? Obviously, that's talking about Jesus. He, he speaks about Old Testament. This is a man who's writing in the Old Testament. And he's talking about what they knew from the Old Testament before Jesus came. And in the Old Testament, the Jews... They, they had this, this shadowy understanding of, of God and they, they said, okay, well, there's at least points of time where we see, you know, the angels came and talked to Abraham and he worshiped them. This, there's, there was God on the earth. There was an angel who was the angel of hosts, the Lord of hosts who came and, and Joshua worshiped him. And that wasn't an angel then. That must have been actually God showing up on the earth. So apparently he ascends and descends. He, remember, Jacob wrestled with a man, and, uh, and the Bible says that he wrestled with God. And so he says, well, apparently there's this, the, apparently God can ascend up into heaven and descend. He's gathered the wind in his fists. He's like, apparently this is something he can do. This is written in the book of Psalms. And we see in the New Testament, Jesus says, peace be still, and the wind ceases. He gathers the wind in his fist. Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Jesus also, of course, calmed the storm on the sea and the seas, the waves stopped. Who hath established, uh, but all these things are said in the book of Psalms. And he's saying, this is amazing that God ascends into heaven, descends. He gathers the wind in his fist. He's bound the water in a garment. Who hath established all the ends of the earth? He's created uh, all things. Of course, 
we know in the New Testament that it was Jesus who created all things. By him, all things were created, and without him was not anything made that was made, First John says. Uh, John, John chapter 1, excuse me. And, uh, but it says, here's, what is his name? Now, the answer, the Jewish answer to this, of course, would be Yahweh, Jehovah. He says, what is his name, and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? So Agar was a really intelligent guy. He looked through the Old Testament and he saw different places in, in the Psalms where it says, The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. He's talking about two different, two different persons, God the Father and God the Son, and who are different from David who's writing, The Lord said to my Lord. Not, neither of those lords are David. He's talking about the Messiah. And God, who is God, and it's all, and, and here is Agur looking at all of these prophecies in the Old Testament and saying, there's something else going on here than just the one person, the Father God. There's, there's a son, there's a son incarnate God here that's being mentioned throughout the Old Testament. And Agur understood this and he says, what is his name, meaning what is God's name? And what is his son's name? And he's proving to the people who think they know everything about the Old Testament at, at, in his day. And he's saying, you don't know anything yet. We haven't figured it out yet. We don't even know what, that God even has a son. And you probably didn't even know that, he's saying to his audience, let alone what his son's name is. And how privileged are we, Christians, to not only know God, we know his name, we know his son's name, Jesus Christ. What a privilege. What a, what a powerful passage to, to see that even in the Old Testament, they understood that there was something more to come. There was a Messiah to come who was going to be God incarnate. And Agur even understood this. And today, the, the Jews reject this idea. But yet, Agur understood it. And this is the prayer of Agur. I'm not sure how much of that... A J. Payleitner gets into in his book, but I look forward to reading it and finding out. Don't forget to support Point of View. You guys can go and use the promo code RAM at whitemountainmunchies.com. Get an amazing snack food. This stuff is really tasty, really is very, very good. And it's non-GMO, gluten-free. You can't get prices like this at any health store. This, these prices are extremely low and you get a discount using the promo code RAM and support the show. So it, it's... It's all good all the way around. You, there's a win-win um, no matter how you look at it. You can also use the same promo code at, uh, at the MyPillow store, www.mypillow.com. Use promo code RAM and get a discount. Support shows like Point of View. We want you to be right about issues. We want you to trust and believe the gospel, be saved, be on your way to heaven. But we also want you to know the Bible more so that way you can be right about issues. To be right about issues, you've got to be biblical. So with that in mind, this is the point of point of view. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.